There is someone who can, you tell, can tell you firsthand everything about the new content repository and who worked tirelessly towards this day. So please welcome on stage Sebastian Kurfürst. Okay. Wow, it's so good to be here. So, I'd like to take you on a journey towards the new content repository and NEOS 9. It started in 2016, so actually nine years ago, eight years, I don't know, <laughs> where we found the concept of event sourcing, where we heard about it somehow. Event sourcing is a concept where instead of just storing the current state of the database, just as usual, we store a history of all the events leading up to that point. And then you can recreate the current state if you need to. And I still vividly remember the team meeting where we thought about that and somebody brought it up and we discussed it a bit, I think in some bar or something, and we thought, what would be the consequences if we built that? And I still feel the goosebumps, actually, when I just tell you about that, because it's so exciting to me. So we thought, like, well, the content repository is the heart of NEOS. It's the brain of NEOS, where all the content is stored in the system. And who has ever had the problem of analyzing a production database in the node data table and wondering, how could this ever have happened? So I have done that a lot. How did we ever end up in this weird state where nodes were disconnected and so on? And we thought, well, if we had this history, we could ease debugging so much because we could exactly pinpoint what the problem would be. And of course, we could build so many new features on this foundation. So for instance, we could do history in undo. We could do content synchronization between different systems and many, many more. And of course, we knew if we wanted to do this challenge, we needed to do it the NEOS way, which means we had the challenge of replacing the brain of NEOS, but we needed to do it in an upgradable way. And it needed to be the stable basis for the next 10 years to come to enable lots of new features. And of course, we wanted to keep the good ideas like workspaces, for instance, but also fix the bad ones, the, the mistakes we made in the past. So we wanted to create the Git for content. So we got to work. First, we built a prototype where we focused on a coherent concept. We took event sourcing as the basis. And event sourcing is pretty nice if the events are meaningful. So slicing the events was really crucial. And this is where we spent a lot of time on. It then turned out that this prototype worked. And we knew we still had a lot of work, but we had an idea that this could actually work out. So we started to remove all the shortcuts. For instance, we had to re-enable the caching. We had to fix the front-end rendering. We had to fix the back-end and make sure this actually worked. And actually, the content repository is not just about event sourcing. In its core, it also has a highly optimized graph database structure, which enables many of the improvements we are doing. And we have spent a lot of effort to create really, really clean APIs. So just to give you an idea, often Bastian and me were spending like four hours discussing how a small little detail of the API would work. And actually changing that would just take like one hour or something. But just we spent so much time getting the details right to save all of you thousands of hours later on when you use it. So let's fast forward six years later until last year. In 2022, at the conference in Dresden, one year ago, we outlined a plan to get the new content repository to production. And yeah, today I'm happy to share that NEOS 9 will contain the new content repository. And And NEOS 9 will be released in the fall of this year, just as we scheduled it. Yes, <laughs> I like it as well. And actually, this concludes a journey of like eight years where we worked on this topic. So I'm really, really excited on this point in time now, and I'm really looking forward to all that. So that means in NEOS 9, the new content repository is ready for production. It will be used as the content storage in all NEOS projects, and it has a rich and stable API to interact with. And Actually, starting as of now, we won't have any breaking changes anymore. So that means you can right now start and uh, build your things upon that. 
So let's quickly, a really quick rundown on what's in there. So if you check the main benefits, it's actually mostly about stability, performance, and extensibility. So for stability, who is actually uh, running node repair in production? Who, who does that? Well, I don't. Ah, some. I, I usually try not to, <laughs> I have to admit. So node repair is a tool if your content repository is in some kind of inconsistent state. So for instance, you have a node which does not have a parent node um, to somehow fix that. And the good thing with a new content repository, nodes without parents uh, cannot anymore happen. And well, you know, somewhere in the code, there's some kind of this. There's some exception which should never be thrown. <laughs> the good thing. If it ever happens, we exactly can pinpoint what the problem was by replaying all the events and then exactly checking what is going wrong. So that is a superpower which we don't have right now and which I'm so excited about. Then let's just quickly run through some performance numbers. So we check the front end rendering time, the front end memory, and the node reloading time. And the new content repository is always about 15% better and faster and using less memory than before. And this is the total rendering time of a page. So, you know, we just replaced one part of it, which is the content repository, but still we see improvements already right now of improvements of about 15%. And we can optimize a lot, a lot, a lot more if we want to. So this is just the start right now. Then we have extensibility. So what is possible now with a new content repository is having one content repository per site. And this includes dimension configuration. So that means you can run one site in German and another one, I don't know, in French and in English. And this will work out. And you can extend it a lot. So you can build custom projections and hooks and so on. If you want to know more about that, please watch Bastian's talk right after the keynote and also watch Bernhard's talk tomorrow about the PHP API. Yeah, in fact, we aim for feature parity, right? So we, we aim for fixing and getting it to a state where it can be used, like right now. But there's a lot to unpack. So we have so many new features already right now, which are built in right now. So that means these are our features you can use, you can try. And they, these features are all built today and are shipped with NEOS 9.0. I know everybody reading. <laughs> Let's just quickly run through the upgrade path. So um, you usually update uh, using Composer, just as you did so far with updating to NEOS 8.3, for instance, or 8.2. What is now new is, the, is you can auto-migrate your code. So we have built an automated tool based on Rector, the Rector PHP system, to change your code, your PHP code, your YAML configuration, and your Fusion code. And you might still need to tweak a few details here and there, but still the idea and the aim is to get a running site um, just by running the auto migration. And when you did that, you still need to migrate your data, and also there's tooling for that where you can import your old data into the new structure. If you want to know more about that, there's a talk about from me uh, this afternoon about it where I, I will demonstrate that. Right. So there's one thing which is also very important, of course, and that is documentation. So you all know Docs Neos IO, I guess, and we've actually created a lot of documentation uh, for the new content repository. So all these pages you see here, which you obviously cannot read right now, um, are pages about uh, the new content repository and Neos 9, and we will create more content along the process as well. But there is already a lot, a lot, a lot to unpack. Right. So this basically concludes the journey until the release. And I'm, I'm so excited to have reached this point. But I'm even more excited that this journey has actually just started. You know, right now we've done the must-haves, and we've done a, a few extras here and there. But I personally would like to build the exciting things. And I'm even more excited that you can build the exciting things as well. And I'm really curious what you all will come up with the basis of the new content repository. So just to give you an idea, we are currently working on a high-performance uh, Postgres uh, database connection, which will bring scalability to a whole new level compared to now. So to sum it up, NEOS 9 will come this fall with the new content repository. There won't be breaking changes anymore starting from now. And the new content repository is more robust, more performant, and more extensible. So 
I'd like to invite you to play around with that, to upgrade your open source packages, and to build great things based on the new content repository and NEOS. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sebastian.